Citrus is a really powerful yet confusing plugin. Today I'm going to be taking you guys through this plugin and showing you tips on how to use it. Starting off, the way the synth works is that we have six different operators as you guys can see at the top here. In Citrus, an operator is basically something that creates a sound. For example, this sound here, that's coming out of operator one right now. With each operator, we can create a unique sound so that whenever we hit a note on our keyboard, up to all six of these operators can play at once. Now we don't have to turn on all six operators if we don't want to. For example, we can just create a sound using just the first two operators. It's up to us really. So if I scroll through each operator, you guys can see they have the exact same functions in each. We have the ability to change each and every one of these operators using the exact same types of tools. Starting off, we have a little preview right here of how our sound in operator one sounds. Again, this sound here. Now this entire section right here, right next to it, this gives us different ways to play around with that shape. So if you're using presets in Citrus, playing around with these faders will have a big effect on your sound. So we have the shape fader right here. This is the main control for changing the shape of our sound. Again, if you're using presets, this is going to have a pretty drastic effect on the overall output if you want to change the preset and how it sounds. So the other faders in this area are tension, we have skew, as well as sign shaping, pre-filter, which acts as a sort of low-pass filter if you want to use that directly onto the sound, and also have noise, which lets us introduce noise into our sound. If you guys want to know what each and every single one of these faders or in general just anything in this plugin does, just hover your mouse over it and you guys can see in the top left corner. It just gives you a little preview of what exactly each and every one of these does. We also have three switches right under the picture of our waveform. These are just more tools to shape our sounds as well. Next up we have the pitch control right up here. They present this in a weird way, but basically the second bar is to jump up octaves, which starts at the default of two. But to go up or down an octave, you need to multiply by two. So four is jumping up an octave. And then eight is another octave. To go down an octave, one is the next octave below two. And then after this, you'd have to go down to 0.5. Right next to this, we have this bar here, which is for more fine tuning of the pitch. This is presented in Hertz. Again, just a very different design here. Moving on, another very useful and important feature here is the plucked mode. So instead of having a constant sound whenever you hold down a key like this, for example, if you enable plucked mode instead, it's gonna sound like a more plucked instrument. Next up, we have the volume control for this specific operator. And next to that, we have control of the overall pitch, but by default, you guys can hear, it doesn't do anything. But as soon as I go down here into the pitch, and I go to envelope, for example, and I turn this on, that's when things start to get crazy. Speaking of this section down here, this is where we control the articulation of our sound. Basically just a way to change the shape of our sound and also we have a bunch of different ways that we can make the sound even more crazy. The first row up here are the different effects of the sounds that we can play with. And we can control how we want to change all of these things using the functions in the second row down here. So I'll turn this off for now and for example if I wanted to change the volume of our sound using an envelope, I just turn this on here. And now the volume of our overall operator is just going to follow this pattern here. And if I change the shape around, you guys can hear. Now it's going to hit immediately. So what we're doing right now is playing with the overall volume of this operator using this particular envelope that I'm shaping right here. If you guys want to use some quick presets, you can hit this arrow down here. Go to open state file. And this gives you a bunch of cool different presets that we can use. Some really useful ones are these ARPs here. Or instead of using an envelope, I can turn this off and I can use an LFO, for example, if I just turn this on. So whatever shape I make with this, this is basically going to repeat over and over again. That's basically what an LFO does. Or instead of controlling the volume, I can just change this over to pitch, turn this on. And again, this is going to do nothing unless I turn this pitch knob up a little bit. So as of right now, I have my one operator here making this sound. 
And now I've created a second sound in operator two. You guys can see the shape is different here. But when I hit a key, all I can hear is operator one still. So what's going on here? Well, that's what this matrix here is for. So the way to read this matrix is like so. You guys can see in row one, this dial here is the only one that's turned up right now. But if I turn it down, the volume of operator one slowly goes down as well. If I turn the knob below it, now all of a sudden you guys can hear, we can hear operator two now. So the way to read this is that here in this section up here, this is for control of each and every single operator that we have, one through six. The last column in each of these rows right here, this is gonna help us control the volume of each and every operator that we have. So if I start turning this dial right here, what I'm doing is turning up the volume of operator one. And if I turn this one down, I'm turning the volume down of operator two. And next to output, we have the effects column right here, right next to it. And below these operators here, we have F1, F2, and F3. Now, what do these mean? Well, you guys can see up here, we have a few more tabs. We have filter one, filter two, filter three, and FX. So here's how to think about this. We have operators one through six, and all of these operators can create their own sounds. With each operator, we can run these sounds through an effect. To quickly look at this tab for now, I'll show you guys a little bit more in depth later on in this video. We have a bunch of different effects that we can use like chorus, delay, and reverb. So each and every operator can be put through these effects. And also each of these operators can be put through any of these filters here. To quickly look through these filter tabs, again, I'm gonna be going over this later on. We have our run of the mill filter here. So each of these operators can be put through any of these filters as well. And in the end of our huge chain here, we have our main overall output after all of this is happening. So the best way to think about this matrix is that it's giving us control of how much volume we hear of each and every single part of this huge chain. Now this might sound confusing already, but let me show you what I mean exactly. If we go back into our matrix here, as of right now we have operator one, the volume is at full so we can hear how it sounds. So as of right now, we're only hearing this part of this huge chain. And obviously if we turn the volume down, we start to hear it less. Now, if we turn up the effects knob right next to it, we start to hear something different. Basically, what we're hearing right now is this part of the chain. So right now, we are only hearing the effects part of the sound from operator one. We aren't hearing the original dry sound that's being generated out of operator one. Now, if I were to go back into the matrix and turn up the output of operator one as well, What we're hearing right now is both the operator sound as well as the effects of operator one. You can think of this like when you add reverb to a snare. When you add reverb to a snare, you have your original dry snare sound as well. You also have the reverb of the actual snare, that huge echo. What we're doing is treating these two like they're two different sounds that we can control the volume of. So when we go into operator one and we turn down the output, for example, and we keep the effects at full volume, that would be like hearing just the reverb of the snare, just that huge echo and not the actual snare itself. Turning up the output dial here, that would be like turning up just the volume of the actual snare, that dry sound. Kind of hard to understand, but I hope that makes sense. So the output knobs here, they control the overall volume of our operators. The effects knob right next to it, they control this part of the chain here. Basically, we control how much of the effects we want to hear from each operator. Next to this, we have pan, which is pretty self-explanatory. I won't bother explaining what that does. Now we have filter one, two, and three down here. So let's turn down the volume of all of our other dials for now. Now, if we go into filter one and I turn the output of this dial up, you guys can hear. Well, as of right now, it does nothing. That's because we haven't selected which of these operators we want to push through filter one yet. For example, if I start turning this dial over here, what we're hearing is how operator two sounds when it's being put through filter one, but I'm only hearing the filtered sound. I'm not hearing any of the original dry sound of operator two right now. Now, if I were to go to the exact same line of filter one and turn up operator three, I'm also pushing operator three through this exact same filter. And I can control the overall output of this filter with this dial here. And just like our previous example, I can also hear how the sounds was being put through our effects. You guys can see it gets pretty crazy. Once I start playing around with the different dials, putting different operators through different filters and effects, you can get a very unique sound out of this. So I've explained the output, the effects, as well as the filter section down here. 
All that's left in this matrix is this section right up here. To put this into layman's terms, to do a quick summary, what we're basically doing is changing the shape of one of our operators using the shape of other operators. So starting off, I'm going to turn off our filter and turn up the output and the effects of operator one. So if I turn up knob two here in our operator one line, you guys can hear. What I'm basically doing is using the shape of operator two to have an impact on our overall shape of operator one. So this is deeper sound design stuff, but just as a quick summary, start turning these dials up just to make your sound a lot more crazy, basically. You can see we have two tabs down here. This is frequency modulation where we control the pitch of our operator using the other operator shapes, again, using these dials up here. And when you hit this tab here, we have ring modulation. This is where we control the amplitude of our operator with the other operators. So these are two different things here. Again, this is deeper sound design stuff, and since I just wanna show you guys the basics of Citrus, we're gonna move on. Overall, just know that using these dials here is just a way to make your sound a lot more crazy and have a huge impact. So if you're using presets, playing around with this area here is a good idea. All right, so moving on to go a little bit deeper into the effects and filter tabs. In the filter tab, we have our basic types of filters right here. And right next to it, we have the ability to choose the intensity of each of our filters. Next to that, we have our dials right here, just like any other filter, the cutoff amount, the frequency you want to cut off and the resonance. This area right here is for wave shaping, basically a way to add distortion to our sound. So if I turn this on. And below this, we have our typical articulator section, like what I showed from the previous operator section. The difference being is that we control the parameters in our filter instead. Going into the effects tab here, we have three different effects that we can play with. Over here, we have the chorus section. This number here lets us control how much stacks we want in our chorus. The faders right next to us let us control the chorus in a few different ways with depth, speed, delay controls, as well as something that you guys should know is that we can load presets into our chorus by going here. The area right next to this is for reverb and delay. You guys can see we have three different delays that we can choose from as well as a reverb down here. Again, just like any other delay, we have our options for different parameters that we can play around with. Just hit on if you wanna start using this. Same thing with the reverb, again, nothing out of the ordinary. Again, we have our preset section for reverb as well, very useful. And again, down below our articulator section once again. So overall, the effects and the filter tab just give us a little bit more finite control over our operator and the different sounds that they're gonna generate. As opposed to just going into our mixer and adding effects onto this sound as a whole, this gives us the ability to control just how much of each of these effects we want to add onto each and every operator using the matrix over here. One of the things that I actually glossed over, which I wanna show you guys another very important tool in this plugin. You guys will see in the articulator section of each of our operators, we have our different tabs here that I already went through. But this very last tab here is something a little bit different. This is the harmonics editor. So this will let us quickly make changes to our shapes. You guys can see if I draw something in here, it's gonna change the shape of this sound. Our operator completely changes. It's gonna sound a little bit different now. And you guys should know left clicking and right clicking do different things in this. Left clicking is to insert a value into one specific bar. Right clicking lets you draw in lines. Filling in the lower areas, the left side of this graph will add harmonics into the lower frequencies of our sound, and on the right side will add harmonics into the higher frequencies. If we were to go in and draw something that's kind of rough, using the smooth button down here is just going to help smooth this out. And the more we click it, the more smooth it gets. And next to this, we have a bunch of different options that we can use to change the shape around as well. And now the last remaining tab up here is the main tab. What this tab does is it gives us global control of our sound. Starting with volume, pretty self-explanatory. So you guys remember in each and every tab, we have the option to use LFO in order to make changes to our sound. This fader here is gonna be the master control of just how exaggerated that LFO is gonna be. If we didn't use LFOs in any of our sounds, this is gonna end up doing nothing and make no difference. Pitch, again, right next to it, it's pretty self-explanatory. Next to this is our ADSR functions to control the shape of our overall sound with the volume section right here. Next to that are the exact same controls, but for our filters. This area right here is for unison control. This is similar to our chorus effect on our effects tab. Again, a bunch of different ways that we can control it here. And also we can go into the presets and use any of these. Again, very useful. 
Right here we have a global modulation control. So if I were to go into an operator and choose mod X or Y to control a specific parameter, for example, if I did this with pitch and I change the shape to be like this, for example, you guys can hear. As of right now, nothing is different. That's because on the main page here, the dot is in the very middle. So as of right now, this pitch is being controlled to play at the very center, which is right at the crossing here. And so it makes sense that this would not create any change. But if I go to the main page and I shift this to the left, the pitch starts to change. So we can map all sorts of things to the X and Y modulators and just have global control just to easily make huge changes with our sound. Next to this is an EQ. Again, just very simple EQ stuff here. And that's pretty much all of the big important stuff when it comes to using Citrus. Hopefully it's a bit easier to understand now, but if there's still some things that you guys are unclear about, leave a comment down below and hopefully I can help out. And as usual guys, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. If there's another plugin you guys want me to cover, let me know in the comments down below as well. My free jump kit is available in the description box below, and I will see you guys next Tuesday.